So this is a quick video about putting together and getting the Rev Linear Motion Kit up and running quickly. So as you'll see, I have some of the parts here. Uh, what you'll need is a 5.5 millimeter uh, nut driver or socket set on the end of a screwdriver, um, your Linear Motion Kit, and a couple of the Rev Robotics 15 millimeter rails. To go over a couple of the quick parts here that you have in your kit, you actually have two different types of sliders. You've got a one-sided slider which is based that was used on the outside in conjunction with the metal plates and you've got the in-between slider which is used in between two pieces of extrusion. It's important to note on the in-between slider that there are two very specific sides. The moving side and the fixed side. You can always tell the fixed side because it goes it has a much deeper cut. In your kit you'll also have four of our metal joining plates and a whole bunch of hardware. There are two sizes of screws in, in the kit. You've got eight millimeter screws, eight millimeter length screws, they're all three millimeter hex. Um, these are used for the in-between kits and you have 10 millimeter length screws which are used with the joining plates. You also have two different types of nuts the nylon nuts and the regular nuts. The regular nuts are used for the in-between sliders and the nylocks are used on the, the plates. So the first example I'm going to show you is an in-between slider. So we can take all of this other hardware and push it to the side. All we'll need for this quick demonstration is two of the 8 millimeter length screws and two of the 8 millimeter, two of the regular nuts and two of the in-between slider plates. So, the first thing that you're going to do, the way that this whole system works is your rails, one of these pieces of slider attaches permanently to one of your rails and then the other rail, the other one attaches permanently to the other rail. So this stays fixed and this stays fixed and when they slide they come together and become the end stop. So let's put one of these together. The way you put this together is you put the head of the screw on the sliding side and the nut on the fixed side. All you have to do is get it started just a little bit slide it into the one end of your rail. You may have to adjust the nut position to do it right there and then use your nut driver to tighten it up. This is the most the trickiest part of the whole assembly is you need to get it snug but not too tight. If you get it too tight this small wall will collapse and in which case it will your slide might bind. You also have to make sure that the sides of the nut are as close to parallel with the rail as you can. Please refer to our quick start guide for a little bit more instruction. So that's one slider and now you do the same thing on the other side. Screw goes through the top, nut on the fixed side of the slider. All you have to do is just get it started slide it into your rail and tighten it up. All I do is slightly snug and then I just just adjust it so that they're parallel. Now you have two of these pieces and then you get one started and the other at the same time and now you have your sliding joint. It's supposed to feel snug but it's not supposed to be tight. You should be very easily able to move it with just the tips of your finger if you've done it correctly. If you're not sure if you've made them tight enough, you can give them a tug and see if they move easily. If not, you've done it correctly. And that's how you do a standard in-between slider. You can extend this same idea by adding more pieces to the outside. So if I wanted another stage, I could add another block here and another block on the other side. And you can continue to do that infinitely. Um, we provide lots of extra sliders to do this in your kit. 
along with the associated hardware. Now we're going to add the side plates to, uh, to make this a much stronger lift so it can deal with more lateral loads. So now you're going to use the flat side pieces and you'll notice these have the step on one side and they're totally flat on the other. So what you do is, th these work the exact same way as the other where you have two sliders, in this case it uses four sliders to add the the side bracket. So what you would do is one of these gets bolted down and one of these stays a little bit loose. This is where it gets a little bit tricky also. Um, the other option is to just use a spacer instead of another one of these sliders for the side that you want to bolt it down. Um, so in this case because we've got the nylon screw, the nylock screws and the 10 millimeter length we'll do a little bit, uh, it's a little bit longer so that's why you need the longer screw. So, same thing, um, this time the head of the screw is going to be in the slot. So you take two of your screws, put them on, this might take a little bit of time to get used to doing this, especially one handed, but slide them onto your plate and then just get your nuts started. Remember, these nuts are not going to go in the slot, so uh, for now you're just doing a rough assembly and then they'll be tweaked uh, once you get them inside the slot. So there you got one side of this, and we're going to do the other side also. Don't tighten these screws up just yet. You actually need them to be sloppy in order so that these sliders won't bind. Alright, so now you've got a paired set. So now the spacing should be nice and easy. So what you do is slide them right into the end of your already attached motions. You may have to wiggle them to get the, the head of the screw to line up, but once it does it good, it will work. So now we know that this side right here is the one that we want fixed and we want this side to be the one that slides. So, we'll take the nut driver and we will tighten them all so they're slightly snug but not too snug. Um, the ones on the outside will leave a lot looser than the ones on the other side. The ones on this side on the side you can basically tighten these as much as you want and the other ones you just want to barely engage the nylon on them, the provided screws. And then there you have it. That screw now, that plate now provides quite a bit of extra relief where it takes the strength off of the bending moment and puts it into the metal plate. You can do the same thing and add another plate here with two more sliders that stay bolted to the other part if you want it really strong. And if you need a really heavy duty application, you can do the exact same thing on the other side. So that's a general introduction to the linear motion kit. Um, there are a couple things that I want to say to just help you out. Um, first of all, you want to make sure that you don't have any um, nicks or dents on your, uh, on your extrusion. This might inhibit the sliders from moving. This can happen if bolts are over tightened when you're using it for other things. So try to pick a side that's nice and smooth. You should be able to run your plastic parts through without very much resistance and that's how you know you have a good side. Also, when you cut the extrusion, sometimes you'll get a burr on the end of the part in the slot. You want to make sure you clear those out with a file or a small screwdriver so that you can easily insert these. You don't want those small little burrs going into the slot and creating tension. Um, We've heard of some teams having some success with using a 3-in-1 oil or a little bit of white lithium grease in the slot to make it a little bit smoother. Um, and we also recommend just a drop of Loctite or some other thread um, sealer on the screws inside, in the nuts on the inside to hold it a little bit tighter. But besides that, you really just kind of have to uh, take a little bit of finesse. It takes a little bit of time to do this. But once you have them together, I think you'll find that it's a really great uh, low-cost linear motion system. Thanks a lot.